welcome to the house of the Lord this evening. We're thankful tonight to be here. I'm thankful yeah. for what God has done for us the last uh, uh, day, both services we had yesterday, and, I, and as I started out with last night. Now, we can't ask God to recreate anything that we felt yesterday. No. No. Uh, we just can't ask God to do that. Right. He has got brand new in store if we will trust in Him right. and allow Him to give that this evening. Uh, we're thankful for Brother Jeff that's come tonight to preach for us. Uh, uh, bless God, we're thankful tonight for, for His glory that's come uh, to sing for us. And as I told you with Brother Jeff's group last night, uh, these girls didn't come to give you a concert. They didn't come tonight to try to to try to give you something that you can uh, uh, ooh and all over them for. Uh, these girls know what they're singing about. So yeah. uh, they just come to praise the Lord. Uh, we want to stand tonight. We're going to start this evening uh, with what a friend we have in Jesus tonight. If you'll stand with us tonight and sing what a friend we have in Jesus.
be seated this evening. Uh, I have one thought tonight. I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, again, I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to be in God's house. Yeah. But I, as uh, Rhea was saying, I had this thought here. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 8, and verse 20, it says, The harvest is past and the summer is ended, yeah. and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am like astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of thy daughter of my people recovered? Now Jeremiah here is saying, I'm looking all around me. Jeff, I, I'm looking, I'm looking all around me and I see people that are hurting. I see people that are struggling. I see people that are in need. But, he, but he, he answers his own question here. But he says, is there not a balm in Gilead? That was a, that was a healing cream. That was a, a, that was a, that was a medicine that they had there. Uh, and people would come from miles around uh, to go and dig this balm up. Uh, or this, uh, uh, this tree, this plant that's uh, at the root of this tree. Uh, and they would get in there and they would dig this up. Uh, and they would make this balm. Uh, and it was a healing balm. Uh, and they would go uh, and they would get what they had in need of. They were in need of. Uh, and what Jeremiah is saying is, is there no help there? Is there not help in Gilead? Is there not a position there? And bless God tonight, I look all around me. I see people hurting. I see people struggling. I see people weak. And I'm asking the same question. Is Jesus still not on the throne? Is he still not in control? Does he still not have the ability to help like he always has? And he always will. Then why is the health of our people not healed there was one answer to that question Jeff that bomb was free to anybody that was willing to go and get it oftentimes when we look at Christ we think we've got to do something major I mean we've got to do some kind of great deed but Christ has said right here tonight saying if you need something from me all you've got to do is come and get it but there are two types of Christians, I believe, in this life. And the Bible talks about those in Psalm 78. Book of Psalm 78, the Bible says, uh, Many marvelous works did the Lord uh, in the sight of him in the field of Zon, uh, down in the land of Egypt. Uh, and bless God, he went through, how he parted the Red Sea, uh, how he, he, they crossed on dry ground, how he did, did all the plagues there, and he brought them out. Uh, and they said, and they tempted God more, the Bible says, and they tempted God more, saying, can God provide us a table in the wilderness? There's two types of Christians in this life. There are can God Christians and God can Christians. Bless God, you just got to decide tonight which one of those you're going to be. Are you going to be a can God Christian and continue to ask him? Continue to ask him why? Continue to search for answers? Are you going to step back and see that God is and always has been and ever will be? He told him in Revelation. He said, I am the first and last. Bless God, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I am the end. Bless God, he's done everything you need tonight in your life if you'll trust him. But you've got to get rid of that can God mindset and get in the mindset to say, God can help me. God can provide. God can give me what I need. But you've got to trust God tonight. If you'll do that, whether you're in the house or you're at home tonight, if you'll get on your knees and ask God for help, the Bible says this. I'm, I'm, girls, you get ready to come. Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He said he'd be a friend in Proverbs. He said he'd be a friend that's thinking closer than a brother. Like God, he told us, uh, I had another place there in the New Testament. He said, uh, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That's what he told his disciples. Thank you, Lord. That's what he told his disciples right before he left. They knew that he was getting ready to leave them. He said, don't be sad because I'm going. I'm with you always, even to the end. You realize tonight if you're saved, I mean, you've got the best thing there is. 
I mean, you got the best help, the best support, uh, and the best guidance. Uh, you got the best that they're very, the very best that there is. Uh, but bless God, every now and then you gotta, you gotta quit worrying about it and thinking about it so much, uh, and just trust God. Uh, just get down on your knees and ask God. Uh, just get down on your knees and say, Lord, uh, I'm tired of feeling this way. Uh, I'm tired of the games in my mind. Uh, I'm tired of all the, all the thoughts that are in my head. Lord, I need your help. Uh, I need you to provide for me, uh, and God will do that for you yeah. tonight. I don't need to tell you, but this altar is always open. If you have a need tonight, you come and bring it to the altar. Yeah. If you have a need at home tonight, you get down and you ask God to provide. Girls, you come on and sing. You pray for these girls as they come tonight to, to sing for us. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them, but I'm telling you tonight, they're not up here trying to be cute for you. They know what they're singing about doing. Yes,
Yes, you can, Ryan. Step out over this way. Let her back and see you. Bless you, Brother Jeff. Love you all. Good job. Bless you, Jeff. Bless the Lord. Amen. Glad you saved. Say amen. Would you? Amen. 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 Privilege to be saved. It's an honor to be saved. Yeah. It's by grace that we're saved. That's right. And I appreciate you tonight. Surely. The presence of the Lord is in this place tonight. I was just thinking what the uh, young ladies were saying. Uh, it is amazing what a prayer can do. Yeah. My goodness yeah. gracious. Uh, there's some things only happen when you pray. It won't happen if you that won't happen if you don't pray. Right. Put it like this. They came to Jesus one time and the disciples couldn't cast out the devil. Remember that? And the daddy brought him to Jesus and cast the devil out. Jesus did out of a little boy and they said, come a little bit later, said, well, why couldn't we cast him out? And uh, Jesus said, well, this time come if not by prayer and fasting. Yeah. And I appreciate tonight that uh, you can do more in 30 seconds of praying than you can do in two hours of you fighting and struggling mm -hmm. with your own mind. And I appreciate him. It's him. And it always yeah. has been him. And if anything good is going to happen, it will be by him. Yeah. Any change will come will be by him. Any deliverance will come will be by him. Right. Uh, Jonah 2, 9, Psalm 37, and uh, Psalm 3 all say that salvation is of the Lord. And yeah. I, uh, don't you love him tonight? And I appreciate Amen. the opportunity to be here. Uh, just, just an honor. Uh, that's all I can say. It's an honor. I want you to take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10. Hebrews Hebrews chapter number 10. And uh, I want to ask you, will you stand? And uh, 
I want you to stand your feet, but I was going to say, will you stand in the time of your storm or in the time of your trouble? I was thinking about what Brother Austin preached last night. And, and uh, we can stand, can't we? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 10. Would you stand? Amen. For reading of the Word of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 10. We'll begin reading with verse uh, number 31 down through the rest of the chapter. And I pray that God would continue to have his way in this place tonight. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 31. Here's what the scripture said. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after you were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you were uh, came companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while... Uh, and he that shall come oh, yeah. will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Right. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto oh, yes. perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And that's all we'll read tonight. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to have your way in this place tonight. Help us to preach, not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but God, we pray, be a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power. We pray that your word would have free course tonight, we pray, and ask you, Lord Jesus, that every heart, every individual that's in this house and those that may be watching, Lord, you know the need of every heart, of every in, in their life. And we pray, God, whether it's physical or spiritual, whatever the need is, we pray, oh God, that you'd satisfy that need, meet their needs according to to your riches and glory, we pray, God, that we get to the place, as Peter wrote, that we cast all our cares upon you, and we know and we thank you that you care for us, God. We, we thank you for the privilege of being saved. We thank you for the privilege of sim assembling in, in, amongst the brethren and sisters in Christ. We thank you for the privilege to go to church, and we thank you, oh God, for just being good to us. And We ask God that you'd forgive us of every sin, every failure, and any thought that may be inappropriate, may be sin, God, we pray that you cleanse us, sanctify us, holy, help us to be meek for the master's use, prepared to every good work. We, we, we give this service to you, ask you to have your way. We'll give you all the glory, Lord, for it's in your name that we pray. It's all about you, in Jesus' name that we pray, and no other name would God's people say amen in this amen. place tonight. Amen. If you love him, say it one more time, please. Amen. We want you to pray. As we take our time and give you what we feel the Lord has laid on our heart tonight, I want to read that verse 37 again, and we'll eventually eventually make it there. Uh, the time the Bible says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I was thinking about an old song, and if I'd have thought on the way up here, I'd have Googled it and maybe sang it. But I remember a long time ago they used to sing, uh, a song about a wayward traveler. And then I would say, Palms of victory, I shall wear. Crowns of the palms of victory. And in every verse, if there's about six verses, Austin, that, at the end of every verse, it says, Deliverance will come. Yeah. Deliverance will come. One says, Deliverance has come. And when I look at that, think about that thought tonight and preach simply on this subject, Deliverance will come. Yes. Does anybody believe tonight oh, that yes. deliverance is coming? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we could stop and shout just a little while that deliverance is coming. Thank God tonight. Amen. If you look and understand what the book of Hebrews is, and we'll just take our time laying a foundation. The book of Hebrews is a book that if you describe in one word, you find that uh, the book of Hebrews describes Jesus simply as better. If you look at Hebrews oh, yeah. chapter 8 verse number 6, he was he's the mediator of a better covenant. The Bible says which was established upon better promises. As the writer of Hebrews begins to address the Jewish Christians and he begins to illustrate and tell them how Jesus is better uh, than anything. Now you can say it, he's better than, uh, well, you can compare him to anything and the result is always the same. That no matter to oh, what yeah. you compare him, oh, yeah. Jesus is better. Does anybody That's agree right. with that? 
that tonight. Amen. Hebrews chapter number one, verse one begins with this. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past and the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, who is the appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, set down at the right hand of God, being made That's so true. much better That's than the angels that right. he by That's inheritance true. obtained a more excellent name than that. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that Jesus is better than the angels. That's you read right. that tonight. You go to Hebrews chapter 3 and you find that he said that this man talking about Jesus was counted more uh, worthy of more glory than Moses. And to a Jew, that's big. And, and, they, and they greatly revered Moses. But And, and the writer was saying to them, you may uh, really respect and revere Moses, but the one that we're talking to that's you right. about is better than any other religious figure that has ever been worshipped, that is respected. Jesus simply is better. Yes, Look right. at Hebrews chapter 5, and Hebrews chapter 6, and Hebrews chapter 7. We find that Jesus is better than the earthly priest. You believe that tonight? Right. He's better than the earthly priest for several reasons, but the main reason of which or is this, that Jesus is better than the earthly priest. But really, let me give you two reasons. One, because his sacrifice was sufficient. And number right. two, his sacrifice is eternal. Oh, yeah. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, he's able to save them uh, to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And so you believe tonight that Jesus is still alive. Right at this very moment, he is not dead. He is not in the tomb. He is not a man of our imagination. Would you agree tonight uh, that Jesus is alive? Thank God tonight. And the old hymn says, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. He said to John in Revelation Blessed chapter you. 1, John, fear not, I'm he that's alive and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. I've got the keys of hell and of death. And so we find tonight he's better than the angels. He's better than Moses. Yeah. He's better than the earthly priest. We find uh, Hebrews chapter 9. You, he's, he's better than any other sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 9 and Hebrews chapter 10 begin to tell us, uh, amen, that every priest standeth daily and minister and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, uh, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sin forever, set down the right hand of God That's from right. his forth expecting right. his enemies to make his footstool. For by one offering have been perfected for, forever them that are sanctified. Are you with me tonight? Yeah. And so Hebrews sums up Jesus simply and, and, and deeply as this. He is better. Would you agree tonight that Jesus offered better for his people. But then as we began to examine the audience that the writer was writing to, uh, we find that this was written to the early church, or, or in the time period rather of the early church. And we also understand how uh, Romans chapter 15 says the things which are written aforetime were written for our learning That's that right. the patience and comfort of the scripture uh, we might have hope. Second Timothy chapter 3 uh, verse 16 the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God uh, may be perfect through the furnace unto all good works. Uh, uh, but uh, this was the early church. This was the first century church. Uh, and what does that mean to you and I? As we look at the circumstances under which the early church accepted Christ, uh, it was not like the time period in which we live. Are you, are you with me tonight? Uh, today on the time period in which we live, Live. Uh, amen. Somebody get with somebody would get saved in this building tonight. Or somebody put on Facebook, I just got saved. Uh, you know what would happen? There'd be all kinds of people saved and lost would say, Good for you. We're happy for you. We're proud of you. Amen. And that's the way it ought to be. Right. Amen. Praise amen. Tonight. Amen. But you know what? The early church, uh, they would accept Christ under much different circumstances. Uh, if you look at the history of the early church, uh, on, uh, they were tortured. Uh, on, they were in prison. Uh, and very often, they were beheaded and murdered or martyred for the cause of Jesus Christ. And yet they were still willing to accept him and still willing to say, yes, it may cost me my life, but yes, I am a Christian. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God. For it is the power of God, the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live 
by faith. And Jesus said, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and the glory of his Father and of the holy angels. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father. Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father. Is there anybody here that's determined and willing to jump up and say, I am not ashamed of him? He is my Lord and Savior. In verse 26, they were first called Christians in Antioch. It may have been a derogatory term. That's fine. I'm still a Christian. I'm still a Christ follower. Yes, I stand and say, I have forsaken this world. I've turned to Christ. He's done something for me that nobody else would do. He's done something for me that nobody else could do. Thank God he saved my dying soul. If nothing else want to shout and holler, it may have thrown our hands and give him the glory and be willing to throw up our hands and praise him. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. I'm giving thanks to his name. Is anybody be still so far? And so we understand that the early church, man, they were willing to accept Christ even if it cost them their life. Are you with me tonight? We understand you agree with this preacher tonight. Do you agree that there are only two types of people in this world? Ultimately, it boils down to this. You are either in the church or you're not in the church. Would you help me pray tonight? And try. Uh, now I'm going to get to Hebrews. You just hang tight. Well, in Hebrews yeah. Matthew chapter number 7. Good enter in at That's the cool. straight gate. Provide the gate and body the way. Uh, that leads to destruction. And many which be that go in there at. Because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. Uh, that leads to light. And few there be that find it. The Bible says in John chapter number 10. Uh, if you climb up any other way. They are the same as a thief and a robber. Uh, Matthew chapter number 12 verse number 30. The Bible says he that is not with me is against. He that gathereth not with me scattereth the rock. And so you understand tonight, Matthew chapter number 7. Uh, Jesus said, Me will come to me on that day. And say, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out them? Have we not done many wonderful works? Uh, he'll say to them, uh, uh, never, Depart from me. Uh, I never knew you. Uh, and so tonight you must realize Matthew chapter number 6, verse 24. Uh, no man can serve two masters. Either he'll love the one, hate the other, hold to the one, despite the other. You cannot serve God. Amen. You listen to me tonight. You can't serve God in this world. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Is that what your Bible says tonight? And so it's one or the other. And so as we begin to look at this tonight, as he looks to these Jewish, uh, to these Jewish Christians that were persecuted and tortured and beat and beheaded Headed, amen, for the cause of Christ. As he began to talk to them, I'm getting there. You just ain't tired, but also he said, But call to remembrance the former days. In verse 32, in which after you were illuminated, after the light of the gospel of Christ had shined to you, after that happened, you know what happened? He said, Ye endure a great fight of affliction. Does anybody know that to be true tonight? Anybody better? Oh, help me now. Let me say this tonight. This is not, amen. And as one would say, this is not tiptoeing through the tulips. This is not cupcakes and incense. Uh, you, when you got saved, you were into a warfare. Paul took them out, therefore, in their harness uh, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Is that what your Bible says tonight? And Job 14, verse 1 says, Man, that is born of a woman this few days, uh, as a few days and full of trouble. Second Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 8. Paul said, We were pressed above, beyond measure, above strength. In so much that we despaired even alive. Uh, that Paul said it this way. That man, we are cast down, but we're not forsaken. Is anybody with me tonight? And so would you agree that the Bible tells us that Matthew chapter number 5, that it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. A Job chapter number 2, verse 9 and 10. I'm, boy, I'll get there, I promise. A Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. If man, Job had lost his uh, uh, wealth, he had lost his health, he lost his children. And uh, his wife said, Job, will you just curse your God and die? And man, but Job said, well, you speak one, like one of the foolish women. And he talked about we'll receive good and evil at the hand of God. You go back to chapter number one. He said this. If man naked came out of my mother's womb, right. and naked shall I return thither. The Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. 
Glory. Oh, but blessed be the yeah. God. I'm praying for somebody tonight. He said the Lord gave and the Lord take. Uh, but let me say this to you, but he's still worthy of praise. Uh, blessed be uh, the name of the Lord. Lord. There's somebody here tonight uh, that's been through hard time uh, that you can say, yes, it's been rough. And yes, it's been hard. Uh, and yes, I didn't want to go through it. Uh, uh, but I still didn't take my praise. He's still good. He's still God. He's still tough. I'm still on my way to heaven. So excuse me if the world may think we're crazy and lost our mind. God's still good. God's still good. Is anybody here for now? Let me shout it out and say through it all. Through everything. God's still good. <laughs> sometimes you got to praise him on credit. Sometimes you don't feel like praising him. Amen. Amen. But God's still good. Amen. And if he took all I had, I still have to say that God being good to me. Amen. Bless you. As you look at this tonight, he said you endure a great fight of affliction. Yeah. yeah. Partly, verse 33, he said partly whilst you were made a gazing stock. That's right. Both. By reproaches and afflictions, and partly, whilst you become companions of them that were so used. Verse 34, he said, for he had compassion on me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Bless you, Listen to me out. They lost financially, monetarily, they lost at most everything they had. Everything that they could touch and hand on. He said, the spoiling of your goods, you took it joyfully. Are you with me? Am I? Yeah. I don't know sometimes how you can say that, or how people do it. But their goods were spoiled. But you know why? They took it joyfully. Somebody said, how in the world could you take joyfully the spoiling of your goods? Verse 34 answers that question. He said, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a oh, better yeah. Yeah. and a more enduring yeah. substance. Is anybody That's with me tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. He said, the reason why, hallelujah, you can endure losing everything you got. I wish somebody hear me tonight. But the reason you can lose it all and still have joy. I feel like preaching tonight. The reason you can give it all up and still throw up your hands every now and then is because you know I'm the, oh, help me now, I'm because I'm the on the other side of the grave, on the other oh, side of this land, you've got a substance that is there. You've got a substance that is enduring. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle or this hall, we have a building of God, a house made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse 6 says, We are confident that last we are holding the body. We are absent from the Lord, but we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We used to sing a song as a kid and we sing, I got a home in glory land. Now I'm sorry as the sun. Thank God anybody got a home over yonder. Praise the Lord. Except the reason you can lose it all and still have joy because in heaven, because in heaven, anybody going to heaven tonight, but because in heaven you have a better and enduring substance. That's right. And so then he said this, verse 35, cast not away your good. This is all introduction, amen. He said, cast not away your good for your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, yeah. you might receive the promise. Yeah. Let me give you this one, then I'll get to verse 37. Hebrews chapter uh, 11, I think it is, says these all died in faith. Yeah. Having not received the promise, That's right. but having seen them were far, far off. Yeah. Amen. They were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were pilgrims in this earth. You believe that tonight? Amen. He said they saw before all. Amen. They didn't have it at that moment, but they That's saw right. the promise they were far off. Come on, Jeff. Because they saw, they embraced it. Yeah. The Bible tells us, thank God, 
God about Abraham in Romans chapter before. He said, he said, the Bible yeah. says he sat or not at the promise of God through yeah. unbelief, yeah. but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Yes. Does anybody believe that? That's I, right. I, he, uh, is anybody fully persuaded? Yeah, I said, is anybody fully persuaded? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Romans said, I'm persuaded. Thank God. I said, in chapter one, Amen. I'm knowing whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. He's able to keep that which I yes. have him. Against yes. that him. He said, he said he was fully persuaded that what he had promised, that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Does anybody know that tonight? And believe that what, help me now, that what God has promised, he's able to perform. Yes. He's able tonight. Amen. What God promised, he's able to perform. Bless the Lord. Right. Bless the Lord. And so he said, this after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Yeah. Let's set this in context. And I'll just preach about five or ten more minutes, maybe. Let's set Come this on, in context. Right. So notice what's happening here. As he's looking at a, to, talking to a persecuted church, a tortured church, huh? a church that was spoiled. Come on. Huh? Yeah. Had the good spoiled better. Talking to a church Come on. that endured more hardships amen, than our society Come on. has ever dreamed of. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Is anybody with me tonight? Come on. Talking to a church. If you read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, one martyr was tied to the back end of a bull. Amen. And that bull run down the Coliseum steps and bashed that Christian's brains out. I, I, I'm going to get a little crude. Amen. One martyr. They tied in a sack full of snakes and threw in the river. Amen. Amen. They talking to this church. Amen. That people hated them and people wanted to kill them. They talked yeah. to a church that was going through a, a tribulation. No wonder John Newton said, uh, through many dangerous toils and snares, I have right. already come. It's grace that's brought me safe thus far. And it's grace that'll lead me home. You believe that tonight? I'm right. talking right. to this church. Uh, and then they probably wondered, uh, how long is this persecution? How long are my troubles going to last? Uh, and the devil jumped on their shoulder. Are you with me tonight? I'm oh, yeah. the devil jumped on them just as he does you. Uh, and say, oh, I thought God was good to you. Uh, where is God now? Hey man, you need to sit down and hush. That God you're preaching about. Hey man, yeah. He ain't who you say he is. And maybe the devil saying give in, give up, quit. It ain't worth it. But you know what God, here the text is this, deliverance will come. But here's what he said to them. He said this. He said, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense or reward. In verse 37, are you going to hear this? Talking of this persecuted church, he said they in a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Amen. Can I give you a few scriptures tonight? I want you to know this beloved of God. Amen. Some of you are going through trials. Some of you are going through storms in your life. But may I say this? It's just going to be a little while. That's what he said. He that shall come, he will come and will not tarry. I want to say deliverance is coming to the church. Help me pray tonight. Let me give you just a couple. Hey man, let me give you this one. I will not hang me in your brother concerning them which are asleep. That you saw them not. Even as others which have no hope. But we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring back. But this we say to you, I the word of the Lord. That we which are alive in man till they come to the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But the Lord himself shall be seen from heaven. Let the sound of the voice of the Lord and the trump of God and the dead of Christ shall rise sir. Up then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the cloud up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever up be with the Lord. Wherefore, what because of that, comfort one another with these words. He said, you know why. Help me now. You know why you can have comfort. It's because one day the love the Lamb of God is coming to get the church. You just hang on just a little. Help me now. You hang on just a little while longer. That man, you just uh, and man, dig your heels in trust in God. For in just a little while, he that shall come, he will yes, come, Lord. and he will not tear. And tell me we're just about out of here. Deliverance is coming to the church of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let me give you this and I'll sit down. You mind it, Jeff. Let's go to John. We're going to end up in John 14. Bless you, Jeff. Back up to John 13. This was the night before Jesus 
go, this was the night rather, that Jesus would go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. This is the night in which he would submit to the will, purpose, plan of the Father. Oh, God, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Is that what he prayed? Yes. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. You set the scene of what's going on and preached this just a little while ago. If you heard it, just amen, shout like you never heard it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you look this tonight, now you think about the devastation and the worry that might have been in the disciples and the apostles' mind. Bless you, Jeff. Jesus had just looked at them yeah. and said, one of you shall betray me. Yeah. Right? Yes. Then on top of that, Jesus said about that man, it would be good for that man to have never been born. That's right. One of the 12 that went with him everywhere. Right? Jesus had said in Matthew 26, 28, this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for remission for sins for him. Do you understand? Jesus began to tell them as he partook of that last supper. He said this, take eat this, take eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Amen. He said, this is my blood. Is that not what he said, right? right? Yeah. He began to tell them how he was going. Now, if you read, the, if you study the book of Mark, you find uh, a couple of different times, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the time you find that uh, uh, Jesus would say that he would die, and, but they didn't believe it. And one time, Peter himself said, Lord, yeah, that's not that. No, no, no. Uh, that's not the way it's going to be. Uh, amen. Even Peter rebuked Jesus uh, and said, no, you're not going to die. And, uh, remember what Jesus said? And get thee behind me, Satan, uh, for thou savest the things that be a uh, 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 men not of God. Uh, right. and so so we understand tonight that this was the one that they saw. Yeah, man, uh, this is the one that they saw raise the dead, heal the sick, open the blinded eyes, yeah. and stop the deaf ears. Uh, the one they saw touch a coffin in Luke 7 and a dead boy get up. Uh, the one that said Lazarus come forth and John 11 and a man that had been dead four days get up. Uh, uh, this is the one uh, they knew that he said, uh, he told them I have my power away, my light now. My power take it up. Uh, this is he exhibited his power in a way that nobody else ever has. Anybody with me? So oh, far. And so, but then Jesus said, now, I'm it. going to die. I'm going to lay my light down. Now, and if you understand, when you study the oh, boy, this is, and now, now, when you study the resurrection, now, they fully didn't understand what the resurrection was until after he had resurrected. Right. Well, I had time to get that study. They heard it, but they really didn't get it until after it happened. And so picture this. There they you're going to deny, uh, three, uh, hey, you're going to deny me three times. Is that what the Bible right. said? Uh, and can you imagine this? Uh, can you imagine the state of mind that they were in? Uh, it's dark. It's gloomy outside. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, having bowed over uh, the weight of the pressure uh, of the sin of all, you know, of all humanity uh, being laid upon his back. Uh, right. And they said, one of you's betraying me. One of you's going to deny me. And then Matthew 26 around verse 31, uh, uh, Jesus said and quoted the prophecy and said, this, uh, 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 the, uh, the shepherd, uh, I'll smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Uh, and he let them know not just Judas uh, and not just Peter. Every single one of you is going to betray me. Uh, uh, can you imagine the trouble? Can you imagine the stress that was in their mind? Uh, what they placed their future in? Uh, the, is anybody with me? Uh, the one in whom they placed all of their hope. Uh, and all of a sudden he's going to die. They're all going to be scattered. They're going to betray you. Can you imagine and what it felt like at that moment. That's John chapter 13. Hey man, we often give it a break. We often begin at 14. But this was the same night. Yes. This was the same sermon. Hell this yes. was the same dinner. This was the same conversation. After all that stress the disciples were under, Jesus said even in all that, he said, let not your heart be troubled. That's right. Amen. I'm done after you believe in God uh, in my father's house. Or in, uh, if it works, I told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yes, if I'm going to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that there I am. Uh, up there you may be also. Whether I go, you know, the, Thomas said, Lord, we do not will without know. How can we know the way? But Jesus said, I am the Amen. way. Up the truth and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Is that what you're about? What are you telling me, preacher? I want you to know some of you are going through a fight of afflictions, but you just hang tight. Yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. We're going to a land we'll never be sorrowful again. We're going to a land we'll never cry. Is anybody glad? You're, you just hang tight. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance is coming.
done. Amen. 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 We'll come. Yeah. We'll not tarry. Yeah. Don't give up, children. Bless you, Jeff. The end is worth the means. Bless you, Jeff. Bless you, Jeff. But we have to go through down here. Tell them that. Right. I reckon. I thought I was done. Come I on. reckon. Come on, Jeff. Sufferings. Come on, Jeff. Yeah, right there. Right. right there. Yeah. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Here we shout because we're just about out of here. We're almost going. We're getting ready to step over under the sun-kissed hills of glory. Tell her, hang in there. Deliverance is coming now. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Same. 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 Blessing you. Bless you, Jeff. <laughs> you need a prayer tonight. Bring, Bring it to the altar. Yeah. See, preacher, I don't... I'm gonna get real personal real quick as Danny's going away. But what lost I like to shout about heaven. Yeah. How many of you ever felt like this? I don't want to wait to heaven to get my comfort. Amen. You ever been there? Tell them, Jeff. I have. Tell them, Jeff. I know heaven's going to be a beautiful place. Yeah. But preacher, I'm 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 bothered right now. That's right. May I say tonight, Jesus, or excuse me, this right of the same book. God, I'm asking you that you would not touch it. Quoted what the Bible says. Is, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He's a hill, he'll death ultimately deliver us then. I'm here to tell you tonight, not only did he, is he coming then, but he came out this place tonight at the River Gospel Tabernacle. By to help you. Yeah. See, see, I waited patiently. On you ever felt like that? Sometimes we wait patiently. Sometimes we wait impatiently. Amen. David said, "I waited patiently for the Lord." You know what he said? He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Preacher, just a little bit yesterday, Romans eight twenty six. We know not what to pray for as we ought. Amen. But the Spirit itself made the intercession for us with brothers that come. You ever been down there that you didn't know what to pray? You didn't know how to pray? You didn't know what to say? 